With the crypto market again back on a bull run and with Bitcoin reaching over 67k in March 2024, the demand for cryptocurrency, debit and credit cards is definitely on the rise. This is why we are three years later once again taking a look at the Crypto.com card. Crypto.com has since 2021 decreased the benefits, the cashback and the overall upsides of the card but the question still remains, is the Crypto.com card still worth it for someone looking to spend cryptocurrency in 2024? Crypto.com was funded in 2016 and is today the 24th largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Now the exchange offers a wide range of services such as derivatives, a normal cryptocurrency exchange, an NFT marketplace and a wallet to store your cryptocurrency. And the platform actually got super popular initially back in 2021 because it had some of the best cryptocurrency cards on the market offering crazy cashbacks on most of their cards. And on top of this, I'm sure you've already heard of Crypto.com multiple times because they do spend a lot on marketing. They are the main sponsors on a lot of different sporting events and especially the UFC. And they also bought the naming rights on one of the biggest arenas in LA naming the arena the crypto.com arena now the crypto.com card actually comes in five different tiers and each of them are offering kind of different benefits depending on which card you go for and the benefits that you get depend on how many zero tokens you're staking on the platform a staking basically means that you lock up your money on the platform for a set period in order to get access to these cards and the zero token that you will have to stake in order to get the crypto.com card is actually crypto.com's own token which facilitates all of the transactions on the platform and when you get cash back for example you're going to get it in zero tokens so this is the main currency that is used on the exchange itself and in this case you will have to lock up your money for 180 days so you'll have to exchange to the zero tokens then you'll have to lock it up for 180 days to unlock the various benefits of each individual tier and keep in mind that if you want to keep all of the benefits that you get with your card you're going to have to keep staking your CRO tokens in order to maintain your benefits so even though they're not locked up anymore you can sell at any point after the 180 days you still have to keep staking your CRO tokens to kind of keep your benefits with your card otherwise you'll lose a lot of the main benefits with the card itself if you basically decide to move your money somewhere else. So the different cards you have on the platform are the following you have the free midnight blue card which comes with no special benefits but it allows you to use your cryptocurrency to pay for things as well as 200 euro or about 200 dollars limit per month for free ATM withdrawals. The next tier is the ruby steel card which requires you to stake about 350 euros or about 350 dollars in CRO tokens. The royal indigo or the jade green card card requires you to stake 3,500 euros, about $3,500 worth of CRO tokens. The Frosted Rose Gold and Icy White card requires you to stake about 35,000 euros worth of tokens. And finally, the top of the top is the Obsidian card, which requires you to stake 350,000 euros worth of CRO tokens. Now, one of the main reasons why people decide to get the Crypto.com card is usually for the cashback. So when looking at the cashback for each card tier, we have the Midnight Blue, which doesn't require you to stake any CRO token and offers you 0% cashback. No surprises here. For the Ruby Steel card, you're going to have to stake 350 euros worth of CRO tokens. You'll get a cashback of 1%. Now keep in mind that this tier has a limit of $25 worth in cashback per month, but no limit during your first month. This means that you should at least be getting $300 worth of cashback in a year if you do max out the $25 limit every month and potentially even more if you spend a lot during the first month. Now the Royal Indigo or the Jade Green requires you to stake 3500 dollars worth of zero tokens and will give you a cashback of two percent now this card also has a cashback limit which is increased to 50 dollars per month and your first three months have no cap this means that you should be on the minimum be getting 600 dollars worth of cashback if you do max out the 50 dollar limit now the rose gold and the icy white requires you to stake 35,000 euros worth of zero tokens that will give you a cashback of three percent but there's no limit and the obsidian card requires you to stake 350 50,000 euros worth of zero tokens will also give you a cashback of 5% with no limit. Now another really popular benefit with the crypto.com card is going to be the subscription reimbursements that you get with the card itself. This basically means that you will get reimbursed for any subscriptions that you have on Netflix or Spotify for example. So if you're spending or paying for these subscriptions with your crypto card you will actually get reimbursed whatever the subscription actually costs which means that these services are free 
if you have the right tier. Now the Midnight Blue does not obviously have any benefits here, but the Ruby Steel card gets you Spotify reimbursements for your first six months. This means that you should save about $84 worth of subscriptions with the Ruby Steel card. Same goes for the Royal Indigo and the Jade Green card, but here you also get six months worth of free Netflix reimbursements, which will save you an additional $84. The Frosted Rose Gold and the Icy White card gets you unlimited Spotify and Netflix reimbursements, which means you should save about $336 during a full year. On top of this, you also get reimbursed for your Amazon Prime subscription, saving you an additional $180. And if you pay for X Premium, which I don't really know anyone who does that, but if you do, you also get reimbursed for that for your first six months, saving you an extra $48. So Obsidian Card obviously gets all the same benefits as the previous tier, but instead of six months of reimbursements on Twitter, you will get a reimbursement on your first 12 months saving you an additional $98. Now, if you do decide to go for the Royal Indigo or any of the higher tiers, you will also get airport lounge access in a partnership with Priority Pass. Now, the Royal Indigo and the Jade Green card comes with four visits per year, and you're not allowed to bring a guest into the lounge itself, but this should still be saving you about $115 per year. Now, the higher tiers, on the other hand, comes with unlimited visits, which is great, and also includes guests every time. So this should be saving you more than $460 per year, given that you would otherwise have to pay for the priority pass membership and this does not include the guest visits which normally would cost you about $30 per visit. If you decide to go for the frosted rose gold or the icy white or the obsidian card you will get more of the exclusive benefits with the tier. This includes 10% cashback on any bookings that you make on your card on Expedia but it's capped at $50 per month. The obsidian card would also get you 10% cashback on Airbnb also capped, but it's capped at $100 per month. Now both tiers also get access to Crypto.com's private services, which basically include things such as their OTC service, research reports, invites to industry events, and also priority support options. Now both tiers also get the exclusive welcome pack, which basically is a bunch of different things with the crypto.com logo like a t-shirt and socks and whatnot basically just turn yourself into a walking billboard for crypto.com but if you like those sort of things then here you go now, the final benefit here is only gonna be for the obsidian card holders and it's gonna be a private jet partnership that crypto.com has with vista jet now there's not a lot of information on what this actually includes but after doing some digging it does seem like it includes a bottle of dom Prion and a single one-way VIP transportation when you are booking a private jet with VistaJet. Obviously, I won't be able to tell you whether or not I think this is a great benefit because I have no experience with it. But if you are someone who's gonna be able to stake 350,000 euros worth of zero tokens, and obviously I think you can make that judgment yourself. Now jumping over to the biggest downfall of crypto.com, which is gonna be the fees, starting off with a debit and credit card top up. Here you're paying a 1% fee no matter which tier you're on. For ATM withdrawals above your monthly limit, you're paying a 2% extra. Closing your account is gonna cost you 50 euros. Ordering the physical card is gonna be five euros. The crypto.com card replacement, in case your card gets lost or stolen, is 50 euros. A card upgrade is gonna be free. And if you have inactivity on your account for longer than 12 months, you're gonna be paying a five euro fee per month. Now for transaction fees, if you're spending your money in euro, your transactions are gonna be free. If you're not spending in euro within Europe, you're gonna be paying a 0.2% fee. And if you're not spending in euro, but you're outside of Europe, you're gonna be paying a 2% fee on each individual transaction. Now for the monthly limits, on your free ATM withdrawals per tier. For the Midnight Blue, you have a 200 euro limit, the Ruby Steel, 400 euros, the Royal Indigo and the Jade Green, 800 euro, the Icy White and the Rose Gold, also 800 euro, which is surprising, I thought it would be higher here. The Obsidian card is gonna give you a thousand euros per month. Now your total withdrawal limit is gonna be the same no matter what tier you're on, and this is capped at 10,000 euros per month. And also your top up monthly limit is also gonna be 25,000 euros, and all the same across all the tiers. Now for my final thoughts here, I definitely don't think that crypto.com is the best cryptocurrency card on the market. I don't like the high staking requirements, the top up fees, the poor card limits, especially when a lot of the card limits are actually the same, no matter what tier you're on, even though you're staking, 35,000 or 350,000, you're still getting the same limits. It doesn't make sense. And other than that, the fees are just way too high in general. Still, I do believe that the crypto.com card could be a good fit for someone who 
tends to use all of the reimbursement services that's included with each individual tier. And on top of this, you are already using crypto.com. So if you are a crypto.com user and you want to have a crypto debit card, then it's going to be a great fit. But I'm not entirely sure yet whether or not it's going to be worth for someone who's using another crypto exchange to set up an account on crypto.com just to get the card. Now, if you still want to sign up for the crypto.com card, you can do so using the link in the video description or you can scan the QR code somewhere here on the screen and you will get $25 worth of CRO tokens on top of the benefits that you get with the card. Now finally, let me know what you think about the crypto.com card and if you have any other crypto card you would like me to review. But that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys in the very next video here on the channel.